Hello and welcome to Model Kit Stuff and the next part in our build series of um, Edward's Lassander in 148 scale. This is a double build. Uh, we are building the SOE version and the Finnish Air Force version at the same time. Now in the last video we got up to this part here where we've nearly finished building up the cockpit internals. Uh, so that is where we're going to pick up. We also need to get the finish um, cockpit up to this same level. Once we've got the uh, two cockpits uh, built up um, and finished, we are then ready to uh, get them in the fuselage and close that fuselage together. Let's see how we get on. So we have a little scratch built, um, it's like a table, but it's actually a seat to believe. Um, it's certainly copying what's in the SOE version in the museum, um, which is in pictures of it in my reference book. Um, so we need to fit that into there. So that is my next job, is just to test fit that. Well, it goes in, so that's good. Let's have a look how the fit. Okay, it was a little tricky getting it in. And basically what I've had to do is put it in sideways um, so now I need to lift it up a little bit so it's central and glue it all at the same time. So this could be fun in the not fun sense of the word. So I've just glued that into place. So you can see it there. So that looks okay. the exhaust painted you can see that there's a slight sort of bronze hue to it which dark bronze hue which sort of um, gives it that, that brown burnt look when it when you're wanting it as a burnt iron but on this it just seems to be about right for me maybe slightly pale but I don't mind that um, it, it comes out better against the white than the black I think um, but it's exactly the same color put on in the same way so yeah, I'm happy with that. So we just need to let that fully dry um, and then we can uh, think about putting the engines inside, although I've got to still paint the white on the finish one. Right, now this is dry. Next job is to put this um, top plate in, which just pretty much sits on top. There's a couple of location points here that sit on the inside of the frame and, and that's pretty much it. Just gonna pop that in. Make sure that's sat nice and flat. Goes in no problem at all. So that means we've now got to deal with the front. So um, we've got this part, which if you remember uh, was an additional item. So we're going to use that in this, which sits on the inside of there. We've got a compass and bits and pieces to build up. And we've got the seat harnesses to do so I think we're going to do seat harnesses next okay there's four parts to the seat harness and I'm going to start with the one that goes against the back of the seat here um, and build from there I think don't have pilots for this now that looks quite big when you look at the instructions, it shows it halfway down. Oh dear. Right, let's have a look. So 
Well, it won't go any further down than that. Well, that doesn't make much sense then, does it? I sort of assume the bottom end of this folds underneath the seat and acts as like a fastening, but that won't work on the plastic seat, and I've got the same photo etch. And if you look on these instructions, which came with the um, um, display of dials and things, it's showing exactly the same but it also says you can use this on the plastic seats well you're not going to get that in the gap I don't think here's the shoulder belts in So next, we need to tackle the lap belts. So while the glue is drying on the harnesses, we've built um, the um, finished cockpit up, um, which is looking all right now. We've got that seat in the back, um, which isn't in the SOE version. Um, it's missing the additional tank that the SOE version has. Um, I've got to say, this has fitted together a lot easier without the Edward Etch interestingly so uh, yeah uh, what I still have remaining is to put um, seat harnesses on before we can um, attach the top of the framework like so and we're using the etch um, array there dial array um, and we've also got to fit this in which I know is going to be um, problematic because um, it was difficult on the on the last one um, but at least I've got no photo etch so I can manhandle this a little bit more um, plastic being a little bit more forgiving so I'm going to put that in next okay we have our seat in and just for comparison that is the more basic version just got to put lap belts on that one. Um, it, it looks suitably realistic. Um, certainly the photo etch um, basket makes a big difference to that seat. Um, otherwise, there ain't a lot of difference really. The finished version of the, uh, the sander has uh, a machine gun mount. Uh, there's options in the kit for double or single. Uh, single is what's required for the finished version. So that's all been built up. I've just got to give it a lick of paint and then um, that is finished. And on the SOE version there's no gun at all so we're ready to mount that into the fuselage. Um, one of the viewers in the last video in the live chat commented that he had a bit of a, a job with the uh, cockpit as well so I'm, I'm hoping by that comment that what he meant was and the rest of it was okay <laughs> we will see right i'm going to glue this one in to start with and then we'll take it from there. dry. So whilst the glue's drying on the um, cockpits in the fuselage halves, 
want to have a look at building up the skis for the finished version. Um, so that's this assembly here. Um, so we've got the two halves. That is a bit of photo etch that needs folding. And given the issues that we're having with photo etch and fit, um, I want to have a look at that next. Um, just so that if I've got any filling to do on the fuselage and filling to do on here, we can do it all at the same time. Um, so I'm going to have a look at that. I'm going to suspect that the wheel version is going to be easier because it's just kit parts in the main. Um, and the kit parts seem to be going together okay generally. So, um, yeah, let's have a look at this. So I'm starting just by test fitting the basic parts as they are. Um, and yeah, there's going to be a little bit of filling needed. Okay, so let's start with these photo etch. Um, don't know what you'd call them really. They go on the inside, so some form of lining. So that's these parts here. Okay, let's get bending. So, just putting initial bends in because I'm not quite sure how far these need to go around. I'm guessing that once we put some bends in, it will become obvious. So those two back end edges need to join. Okay, well they go together okay. Now my next question is, Does the two halves, do the two halves hold this together? Now, that's interesting. Right, so if we take one of these off, as you can see, another problem here. This is the stanchion that the uh, ski mounts to the bottom of that. And that glues in there, like so. So how does that fit in? If you look at the instructions, it shows the stanchion going up through the photo etch and then gluing onto there. Yet there's no hole in the super in the photo etch to allow that to pass through. There's no hole for the peg I'm of a mind to not bother I think that's going to cause me more problems than if you don't put it on you're hardly going to see it if I do put it on I've got lots of issues so I think my solution is in the bin oh that's looking a lot easier already So I need to take the ski off next, which is attached to this long resin runner. So um, we're going to saw that off. And the first thing I'm going to do is get it wet. And I'm getting my saw blade wet. That'll just help keep the dust down. There we go. And just give that a little sand now. Okay, I'm going to do the other one and then we can clean all this up and wash my hands and what have you. We have these um, little wing shaped things which uh, come out from the wheel pods. There is um, a large location. Um, pin on the inside but no location hole here um, that is for a strut I believe um, so the instructions ask you to drill a hole um, in the middle of there um, to locate it so that's the, the, the 
plan. Um, I've, I've decided that it's easier to remove that and just glue it in place. We know where it needs to go. It goes across that panel. Um, so I'm going to do that and use some glue to form the bond. There's no weight going on it particularly, so it shouldn't be. This is now in place and it's all good, fits nicely. What doesn't fit so well is Edward's resin gun. Um, it either has to go underneath there or above there. It can't, uh, otherwise, where it was running in a straight line, the actual end of the barrel was on the join. So there was no way you were going to meet the two halves together. So I've decided that the gun needs to be on the outside and we'll then we'll deal with that when we come to put the canopy on, see what, what happens. So all, all I've done is slightly bend the photo etch up to allow it to clear the fuselage. So we are ready now to put this other half on and see how that fits. So there is no photo etch on this, it's just the kit parts. And that goes together really nicely. So I think that is the next job. I'm just there is a little bit of um, encouragement needed to get those two bits to join. Okay, needs a couple of clamps, but. Um, that has gone together with a very, very tiny gap at the top that uh, will be easy to fill. So let's leave that to dry. We're now sort of building up the main components of the kit. So as you can see, I've got the tailplane on and somehow <laughs> um, in the process of priming them, I've mixed up one of them. Um, so. Um, we have, on the SOE version, we have one white one, and on the finished version, we have one grey one. Okay, we, we can sort that out before we put final coats of paint on. Um, so, we're building this up, but because of the um, two paint schemes, we're going to tackle the paint in two different, um, two different approaches. So, for the finished version, um, I need to paint um, some parts of this separately before assembly because it will simply be too difficult once the, the wings are on. So the undersides of the wings um, with this um, RLM60, um, uh, 65 sorry, blue, um, I'd like to put that down before assembly. Um, so we've got a lot of test fitting to do to understand um, what what that means in terms of touch up and stuff thereafter. Um, the kit is proving to be uh, fighting back once more, and I'll take you through that in a minute. Um, because it has quite an unusual um, assembly with glazing in the in the middle of the 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 wings, it means that we can't really glaze the um, the aircraft until the wings is on. Now you might think well you could build up some of it but you can't because well I will show you in a minute um, no you can't <laughs> it's basically the, the issue so where I am is we're going to spray paint the white um, and mask um, and then spray paint the blue um, and then we will um, mask um, and spray paint the yellow because I don't don't think that's a decal, um, but we'll check that. No, I'm fairly sure that's not a decal. So we need to be painting painting the yellow one. Um, so we're going to have to sort of um, paint it all, then assemble the top wing, then assemble the glazing. Now on the SOE version, that is um, all over black. Um, firstly, I've got masks for the glazing. 
Um, so if I can get the glazing to fit, and that's a big if, um, then we will assemble the whole thing and just spray paint it black. Um, if we can't get the glazing um, assembled, and the issue is this piece here, and I'll show you that in a minute, then what we will do is put what glazing we can in, um, mask the interior there, um, and um, spray paint the glazing separately, and then fix it on after. That, that's the plan. So this is definitely going to be the easier way of, of doing it now. Um, we do have a couple of issues to talk you through. So the first issue is with the fit of the wings. So the wings have an opening there which slots onto these little tabs sticking out on the top. So you have the thick portion, it's slightly triangular, so you have the thick portion facing forward um, and then you come to put your wing on and you find you can't put it on because the slot is too short, too short by two millimetres. So what I've ended up doing um, is taking a knife, following this top edge here, following that line and cutting down and cutting out a two millimeter section from this back end. By doing that we can get it to slot in um, but it's a right pain in the in the jack seat. Um, and that's why we test fit so we discover these things before it becomes an even bigger problem than it it already is. So that's what we're doing. Um, in the case of the finished version, because it occurred to me I needed to paint the, the wings separately, um, we took this back off. So we simply put some liquid, um, Tamiya liquid glue um, on the joints, let it heat up the plastic and then we prized it apart. Um, I have done a little video on, on how to separate um, glue. Then we've widened up the, the wings and so what we're going to do is we're going to build the wing section up on its frame separately so that once it's been painted underneath and, and the white's been painted on top we can just glue that on and then build up the glazing around it. So that's the plan with that. Um, so Problems with glazing. Um, oh, you'll also notice that the gun is now off. Um, that popped off while looking at how we're going to fit the glazing. So, problems with the glazing. Right, front, front portion of the glazing, you can see I've got the masks on um, and we've got some um, mask all on as well. So, the front wind shield sits on perfectly. Then we have these side pieces um, and the big panel goes towards the front, this bit here goes towards the front. So if I show you, you have to go in at an angle underneath and then bring the bottom in. It's the only way it fits. If you if you put it in that way, um, it's it's snagging and it gets tight before it's all the way in properly. So the fit of it is quite nice. Okay, so we've got that in. We can put the front windshield in, and the fit is all nice and good. The problem is with this piece here. Now that is supposed to fit in there. It's sitting very proud above the um, model. Um, it also, as you can see, 
on this side doesn't remotely <laughs> doesn't remotely fit uh, on this side. Um, so also this panel, as you can see, this glass panel is short. You see the gap there? So um, about a millimetre gap. Um, and on the instructions they show this slid back and open. And I'm guessing they're doing that because they know that that doesn't remotely fit. It's too tall. Um, and when you've got it in the closed position, it doesn't mate up with the fuselage and it doesn't mate up with the glazing. Now there's a glazing strip that goes along the top here that is supposed to mate with that. And that doesn't quite fit either. Um, and the issue appears to be just this back panel here. So that is why I made the comment about assembling up what we can on the SOE version. So that fits together quite nicely, but this back glazing um, section doesn't fit remotely. Now, um, the glass cowling does fit okay to the um, rail that is supposed to run down. So uh, we're going to have to have the canopies open on on both of them, which wasn't really my intention. Um, there isn't much else you can do but to um, model it um, open, which is um, somewhat annoying. Um, but there we go. So that's sort of where we are with the glazing now. With the glazing, we've got going to do two different approaches. Um, we've got masks for one. And we haven't got masks for the other. So my thought process at the moment is to mask the interior off for spray painting um, and hand paint the glazing. Uh, and I will show you how we can do that um, and still have nice, smart, straight um, paint lines. Um, so uh, I have a, a method. It's not... So, um, it's a method I've used for a good number of years. I can't remember who told me about it, um, but someone told me about it when I was a kid, and it's still still a method that works now for, for hand painting. Um, yeah, so what I'm doing with the finished version is I'm building this up as much as we can, and then we can dry fit the uh, wings before painting, um, where the SOE version... We're going to build this up um, with the glazing in place and just mask off the back. So um, that's simpler. There's more construction on this because we've got the drop tank um, and we've got the ladder. So let's crack on with building. struggling with the wings um, just to get them to align whilst mounted on the aircraft is proving very difficult so I've taken them off as you can see and that definitely solves the problem so um, yeah definitely assemble the, the wings before mounting it on the aircraft
Okay, so the internal surfaces need to be the cockpit green on the framework here. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint the um, cockpit green in and then we'll paint over it with the exterior fuselage colour. Um, now you do need to do your research and just check what colour it is because it's not always the cockpit green, sometimes it's black or grey depending on the country or whatever. We're going with cockpit green. Now this is a, a tried and tested method for me that I've used longer than I can remember. Um, and I know these days everyone defaults to paint masks, but the issue of paint masks for, um, is twofold for me. Firstly, they quite often cause um, a sort of frayed edge when you remove them and you've not got actually a nice crisp paint line. I've had that happen several times. And also, they're not always cut particularly accurately and you end up, um, you end up with having to touch up anyway. finished version of um, the aircraft um, is ready for a second prime. Um, after putting the two fuselage halves together um, there was a fair amount of sanding to be done and obviously we would got one of the tailplanes mixed up so I do need to um, reprime but I've just experimented um, with the yellow for the stripe to see how well that's gone down over the white so we are using um, Vallejo 71078 which is the correct um, RLM 04 um, colour uh, for Luftwaffe yellow um, and it, it's gone down okay um, it's a slightly translucent paint as you can see where I've got um, done a little bit of sanding where I had some uh, primer build up um, you can see that underneath through there and that's about three coats so I am probably going to reprime all of this in the white so that anything that's not primed currently is, is all primed and ready um, and then I might um, lay down a different colour under the yellow before we uh, we put the yellow down um, and basically what we'll do is we'll we'll put the yellow down first and then mask that off um, to um, to then paint the rest of the fuselage and, and, leave, and leave that stripe. It's a little bit challenging because of the the texture of the uh, the texture there of the um, fuselage with all the ribs uh, means there's a, a real high risk of getting some uh, painting grass in there so we need to think about that um, but yeah, I'm quite happy that that colour is going to look fine um, when it's come out. So my next job is masking all of this because I'm not going to build any of this up because we don't have paint masks for this. Um, you can s What I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this, paint these by hand and then after painting we'll build all this up. So uh, masking that is my next job. So just a little tip, um, when you've got um, little cavities like this um, sometimes it's easier to mask them by just stiffing, stuffing them up with a little bit of sponge so this is um, basically um, dishwashing sponge um, that's been cut into pieces so that I can just plop them into openings like that and then that just blocks that off nicely um, we will have to do the rest of it with tape, however. I tend to not throw my um, masking tape away when I've used it. If it's, if it's remotely reusable, I'll keep it because it is so expensive. It's not always possible. 
Um, but I just find um, it's not just saving me money, but it also saves me time because I've got lots of different lengths here cut to size. And, and actually, I'm using the back of my cutting mat here to, to store um, masking tape. So all of this tape was used on um, a different project. I can't remember which one. So, we are in the process of putting the decals on, and uh, it's just another um, item in the increasingly long list of things that aren't good with this kit. So, look at the register on that. That's supposed to be red writing, or that white. Um, the reg the register is terrible on the red. But you can see here. Maybe you can't, but the, the red stripe on the left there on the tail um, is full of white dots. Uh, these decals here, um, they're all off register. It looks dreadful. It really does look dreadful. Um, so I've had nothing but problems with this build. I mean, the kit itself is old, so you expect some fit issues. Um, and what, what we've got had has been minor and easy to fix, so not a problem with the kit. Um, what appears to have happened is Edward have upgraded it and in that process have made a lesser version than the original. Um, take for example this bulkhead here. I've had to buckle it to make it fit. To get the two fuselages together, I've had to bend it. You can see the bend there. Um, the, uh, you know the problems we've had with um, fit in the cockpit um, and then when we've come to put the decals on half the, ins the instructions are missing it doesn't tell you quite where to put them so I've had to use references to place them um, and the whole experience has got a bit disheartening so we have painted the fuselage black. We have painted the um, mast glazing in interior cockpit green and then oversprayed that with the same black as the fuselage. Um, we've unmasked all that. Um, the glazing is glued in place with the exception of the top piece which goes on top of the wings and the rear opening piece that is currently shown open and uh, then we have put the decals on and at that point we have got to um, project stop. Um, this kit has fought me from the very beginning all the way. We've had fit issues, um, all sorts of challenges um, and you know Construction challenges, we can always rise to those and we can always work out and problem solve and find a solution. Um, and I have to say that most of the issues that we've had, not all, but most of them have come from Edward's upgrading of this kit. Because the finished version has gone together much better than the SOE version, which we put all the photo etch in. Now I have to say, it looks all right. Um, but that panel at the back, which you can see just there, the little green one with the holes in, that's buckled. And that's the only way I could get the fuse large parts to fit. And that's because the etch is oversized. But the decals have created a problem, which means that this kit finally wins and we don't carry on with the build. Um, 
the, part, the decals are massively out of register, which when you look at the decal sheet, they look fine. But look at that. Lettering there should be red. You shouldn't see any white. We can see a blue ring around the outside of the roundel. There is white spotting all over the red stripe on the on the tail. Um, it just looks awful. It just looks totally awful. It's massively out of register. So I am not going to spend any more time on a kit that when it's finished I'm just going to chuck in the bin because there is no way that's going on my shelf. Um, there is a certain degree of perfectionist in me that you know that's going to bother me all the time so I don't want to look at it. I don't want to see that so it's not going on my shelf. Um, so I am very disappointed because um, I had looked forward to this this build but I'm you know there's no point taking this any further now. Um, the kit itself is quite nice so what I'm gonna do is um, keep hold of the finished version which hasn't got decals on as yet and that's how I'm feeling and um, go out and see if we can find some aftermarket um, alternative decals which will then give me an opportunity to finish that build so for now the finished version is going to get um, carefully packed away and um, sit there waiting for resurrection one day um, and this version unfortunately is going to go in the bin um, so disappointed because I'd look forward to this and as you can see if you battle your way through all the various fit issues and bits and pieces that Edward have created for you you can get something that looks quite nice um, but do be careful because um, the etch parts a lot of them cause fit issues the resin parts some of them are oversized like the gun for example um, the instructions for the decals were quite poor it told you to use these decals but didn't show you where to put them particularly so I had to use alternative references to find the positions I, I just think uh, Edward had done a poor job and if this was my first Edward kit it might put me off fortunately I've built other Edward kits and know that they often go together with very few issues so uh, a little disappointing however um, we will revisit the finished version at one point and at some point and, and finish this season, I'm, I'm fairly sure. But for now, that is the end of the Lysander build. Thanks for looking in everyone, take care, um, yeah, see you now.